I'm live. Hello. Hello. Oh my God. Kate. Good morning, everyone. Please don't forget. Hey, puppy. Don't start that right away. I just started. Hi. Welcome to Not My Kitchen. <laughs> Hold on, you know, you absolutely know. Come on, it's raining, you're not gonna like it. You absolutely are not going to like it. All right, so let's get you going then. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. And thank you for your patience as I get going on my morning. We're going to be making some black beans, a really easy black bean recipe. And we are going to be um, straining and making a new beet kvass. Uh, I know I make beet kvass often. I make it because it's good for my gut. I drink a lot of it, as a matter of fact. Where's the light in here? Oh, oh, oh. As a matter of fact, the light is out in the fridge. That's all right. You don't need to see that. Uh, I'm going to have some beak of us right now. Um, no rain here yesterday and probably today. I thought I was an hour ahead of us. Um, you guys, I'm an hour late. I decided to, because Friday is grow day, um, I decided that I would just come on an hour late. Plus, plus, I had a very late rehearsal last night and I was exhausted. Sleeping in was a must for me. Glad to know that. You guys enjoy your beat kvass. <laughs> yes, but doesn't she normally start an hour earlier? Yes, I usually do. And thank you. I'm going to make beat kvass. So um, cheers to everyone who's in here, the three of us. I do usually come on at 9.30, but had to sleep. Good morning. Hello, Alyssa. Thank you for coming. We are doing an easy black bean uh, on the stove. Uh, and then um, we will be working on beet kvass. And we're going to make a red ginger beet kvass with orange. Okay. <sighs> Thank God for mornings, right? Okay, the problem today, because you know there's always gotta be, Trucker Z, hey, how are ya? How are ya? There's always gotta be a problem, right? The problem is we had a late rehearsal. Julia baked a whole lot yesterday. She made something called a Toledo Surprise, which she was so kind to make with duck eggs and gluten-free pancake mix. Just a, a delectable treat. Um, but because of that, when I got up, I was prepared to start doing my show and I, the kitchen is, I got to load the dishwasher. So thank you for, uh, who is that? Nigel Noah to know here to show you. Hey, thank you. So it's Nigel and Noah here to show you. 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 I love it. Okay, so I gotta um, I gotta make sure that I get some. I gotta get the kitchen cleaned. So um, let's start doing that. I need to sign into my other computer, and we will get going. Thank you so much for your patience and your time today. I enjoy seeing all of you here. I'm gonna quickly load the dishwasher and then we'll, we'll start on the black beans. The black beans are really actually very easy. It's a pound of black beans with um, uh, an orange, a whole orange cut in half for its juices. Um, a onion and about four four uh, cloves of garlic, all just soaking in water, not soaking, all just boiling away with the black beans on a low simmer. So that's not a boil, that's a low simmer. So that's what we're gonna start. 
Yay! Mama Goonie, morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it is not my desire that you watch me load the dishwasher, but as we had a terrifically late rehearsal, and I was up editing the video that I was supposed to post yesterday. I gotta tell you guys, doing a show and doing YouTube, it's kind of counterproductive. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get stuff done. Dirty broke, dirty broke. Dirty broke is in the house. Dirty broke is in the house. Dirty broke is in the house. Hello, dirty broke. Good to see you. I hope you are well. Wonder what my husband thinks of that. <laughs> He's like, what is my wife doing? I'm being my usual crazy self. Oh, and you guys, for our beet kvass, I did go out and buy some apple cider vinegar um, with the mother so that I can wash the beets. I had to buy conventional beets because there were no organic beets. So when I knew I had to have conventional beets, I absolutely said I had to have apple cider vinegar to wash the, uh, the beets off. It's grow day, baby. Keep, on, keep it going, guys. Yes, thank you, Nigel and Noah here to show you. Nigel and Noah here to show you. I love that name. Nigel, I am sure that we are connected. But I am going to read your about before I get going on anything. Because people need to know you. Because they're here to show you. No, we are not connected, but we will be now. So here's your about. Nigel and Noah here to show you. Welcome to Nigel and Noah here to show you. From children learning to family fun. Kids, kids teaching everyone. Toy reviews. You guys who love that kind of stuff. Toy reviews with lots of games, mysteries of children's ways, discovery adventure with unlimited potential. Come grow with us and show us as we spread love together. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Guess what, Nigel M. Noah here to show you. Let's see. I'm going to watch the video. Ah. Oh. Let's show you Nigel's graduation. Looks terrific. Oh, so much fun. Oh, look at that. Two beautiful children. They're so cute. I don't have kids, but I love to look at other people's kids. Oh, no problem. Tad and Hart, hello. I'm on an hour later. Oh, Noah is looking for his seat. Noah has the most, you guys, if you haven't gone over to this channel, Noah is, is the son and the hair just bounces. He's got hair down. Oh, he's gorgeous. What a lovely young child. So glad to know you. Thanks for showing you. That graduation is so fun. So glad to know, to know you. Um, uh, uh, let's show you Nigel's graduation. Nigel's and Nigel and Noah here to show you has 813 subscribers. I want you to find them and pick them up. Seriously. So glad to know you. I Okay. I really want to get going on this. But I'm so excited about Nigel. And I'm, oh, look, they're singing. I can't, I can't, I can't. I gotta get serious. They're too cute. Oh my God, yay. Yes, you guys check them out. All right. All right. So I'm showing you my messy kitchen. It's not my kitchen, it's our kitchen. I haven't had a cup of coffee yet. Everything's behind. We're doing well though. Nigel and Noia. Noah, here to show you. Wow. And we have Tatted Hearts here too. I love that name, Tatted Hearts. It makes me go. And uh, Mama Goonie's here. Mama Goonie is my, she's my sister. 
Lynx Akers is here. She's just a wonderful person who has lots of knowledge. And the Boss Life is here. From Zero to Homestead is here. You guys, we have a really good house. I'm trying to get these black beans started, but you, I got to tell you, got to get the kitchen clean first. But I, um, I live in a household that is not, this isn't my home. So there's lots going on in the kitchen and sometimes things get left undone because we're all busy. So like I said, Julia, I'm not blaming this on Julia. I was right there with her. But Julia made some delicious treats for rehearsal yesterday. And we had to run off to rehearsal right after that. And hence, this is what we have to do this morning. So we'll get to the black beans in just a minute, folks. Thank you for your patience. Okay. We're also doing a red ginger. Then I'm gonna need that. An orange, or excuse me, a red ginger beet kvass with orange. I would have preferred to do it with um, golden beets, but I don't have golden beets. Also, I would have preferred to do it with organic beets, but organic beets weren't available. Therefore, I will scrub, I will scrub my, um, my beets with apple cider vinegar. You'll see that process. You've seen me do it before. Julia says she'll do this one later, so we'll put that over there, and we'll get all of this in here. I am not used to a standard size dishwasher. I'm used to these as dishwashers or our apartment dishwasher. Link Sakers, I have organic beets from my CSA and I'm going to make kvass with them. Good, good. Are you have you made beet kvass before and do you enjoy it? If you haven't made it before, I hope you um, you have success with your first batch. If you've made it before, I hope that it's delicious. What we are not going to do today, you guys, is make a milk keeper. Um, we're not going to do that because we have plenty in the fridge. And if you guys are making milk kefir and you find that you have one in the hopper that needs to be made, but you don't know what to do with it uh, because you have too much, just put it in the refrigerator to rest, but only for a couple days because it still continues to ferment. And it may, I mean, it may go to cheese. Now, kefir cheese is really good. And you could still use the... You could still use the whey to make your next batch of kefir, but it's you wouldn't want to drink it at that point because it would be, be like eating cottage cheese. And we don't like cottage cheese like that. <laughs> and, and if you want to, okay, I'm going 100 miles an hour, but I have so many ideas. If you want your kefir to go to cheese, make sure you save some starter first and then let it sit just a few more days and then all you do, all you do is once it starts to look pretty chunky, you use some cheesecloth and hang it above a bowl. Let all that whey strain out. And then you have, um, you have a ball of cheese that's soft like cream cheese. And you can flavor it just like you would cream cheese. And it is delicious. It's a probiotic full. It's chock full of probiotics. And it is uh, spreadable. It's super good. But if you want to, uh, what I would suggest before you let it go to that state that you preserve some of the um, some of the kefir so you can start a new batch of kefir milk if you're drinking it like I do. All right. Okay. These have to go. These have to. <sighs> All righty, all righty, all righty, we're close here. I just have to wipe some things down and check for more dishes and put some things away and we'll get going on those black beans. Thank you for, for your patience as I am preparing for what we're cooking today. Wipe stuff down. I'm going a hundred miles an hour. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you guys, the dirtiest place in your kitchen is some is your sink. You need to sanitize this each day. Every day you should sanitize your sink, especially if you're rinsing vegetables off or, or fruits in them uh, or doing stuff like that because it's bacteria laden. Okay? That's another reason I got the ACV, so I can spray down the sink. Before I wash my beets, because I, you know, I want to be very careful with that. This is going to be a ferment, and with my ferments, I don't want any bad bacteria in there. Okay. Oh, Amelia is so demanding. I'm actually going to spray this down with ACB too. There we go. Let that sit. I'm gonna get Amelia in because you know, she's demanding. Then we'll wipe stuff down and get started. I keep saying, we're gonna get started. We're gonna get started. We really are gonna get started. Trigger tray, trigger tray, trigger tray, trigger tray, trigger tray. And puppy, 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 puppy. Hi. Now you can't bark at me while I'm talking to my folks. Okay? You have to be a good dog. You have to be a good go lay down now. Go lay down. She's such a lovely smarty pants. Yesterday she disappeared twice. And she just slips through and she's gone. She's free. She's free. And she runs like she looks behind her as she's running away from you. And then she's gone. And it's like, do I go chase her? No. 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 Julia, with your tea. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's do this. I got this. I did rinse this with apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna get the water hot in here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna spray down this sink. So I need some water going. That's good. All right. Just wipe some stuff down and we'll be good to go. So with this black bean recipe, all you do is uh, you wipe, wipe. You rinse the black beans and pick through them to make sure there are no stones. I've never found a stone in any of my black beans, but it's always a good practice. Rinsing the black beans is, all, is always a good practice. Then it's simply, it's such an easy recipe. I just, I can't believe it. You simply, um, Cover it with water until it's an inch above the beans. And then you put in a half. You put in a half. Uh, you cut an orange in half and put that in there. You cut a, a onion in half and put that in there. You put in four to five cloves of garlic and you let it go. You season. You don't season with salt until the very end. Um. The reason for that is that the salt kind of blends in at first, and if you continue to salt throughout the bean process, it just isn't, it, you'll over salt. So you want to salt at the end so you know, um, you, you know exactly how much salt you're putting in there. Okay. So I find that true to be, uh, I find that to be true with uh, most, sorry, I'm out of the picture. I find that to be true with, most um, beans to salt at the very end. Trick or tray. All right. So I did all my shopping this morning. 
I'm also, you guys, um, I was not able to find organic beans, so I'm just using a simple black bean, um, a conventional black bean that, you know, sometimes you got to do that. If you, Sometimes you can't find everything organic. So, simple black bean. All right. And this is my pot for today. We'll move this over here. You start the beans in cold water for good uh, inside. Okay, let me look at the chat real quick. I bought a book, As a Man Thinketh, yesterday. <laughs> Have you looked through it, Alyssa? I'll do a reading from it after we get the beans started. You know, facts. Oh, wow, good to know. Had you ever made milk kefir with buttermilk? Lane Sakers, I don't know if I would make milk kefir with buttermilk. First of all, buttermilk is already a fermented product, and I would think it would curdle before it would, um, before it would kefir. You'll have to try it and let me know, okay? Let's rinse these beans. Bring it over on your pedestal which ah, are two boxes of wine. Do I always have two boxes of wine on hand? No. But since I figured out that it's the perfect height for what I'm doing all the time, then I, I always, now, yes, I do always have two boxes of wine on hand. Okay, so remember I had sprayed that sink. When you're doing beans, it doesn't matter if you're, um, you're rinsing with metal or plastic. I think what I'll do, oh boy, you're stuck. I think what I'll do though, these are not gonna fall through the colander, so. I will put this here and I will let you see. We'll back up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So, use my new kitchen scissors that I got my host to cut open the bag. And I do my best. I mean, I. Minnesota, we don't have a sense of how important water is. So, but I have, have having been, oh my God, my lips aren't working. Having been out uh, in the Southwest and understanding that water is a commodity, I have started doing some things um, a little differently. Instead of rinsing the beans like this and let it, letting the water fall through, I do it like this now and use as much water as I need. And then I take that water and I water the plants with it because why not? Okay, that's about as much as I need. And as I look through, I don't see, I see no stones or anything like that. I see a few broken ones, but that's all right. Um, so what we're going to do, you guys, we're going to take cold water and pour it over the beans in the in the pot. Remember, I'm going to use this water to water the plants. Um, we're going to take these beans, put them in the pot, uh, put in the ingredients, and put in some cold water to an inch above the uh, beans. Going from this state where I didn't soak, I didn't boil it for an hour, what ends up happening is you get a really creamy black bean. Um, so uh, these black beans I would use for anything at, from a side dish to making tacos with them to adding them to different, different dishes, you know, a, a soup. You could make a black bean soup out of it. Um, it's so versatile. So let's uh, try, let's get going on this process. So 
my lighting isn't so good, but I'm sure you can see. First things first, black beans go in the pot, right? Then we're gonna add our ingredients. So let's get those ingredients prepped. And those ingredients are one orange, some garlic. Look at the beautiful purple garlic. This is organic. I got a purple garlic out of Gilroy. So this is a Gilroy um, garlic clove. Very, very precious to me. I have been to Gilroy where they have the garlic festival and it is, it's just so tasty. It's the best garlic I've ever had. What's going on in the chat? LSP, thank you so much. So LSP is here, Inside Kate's Kitchen. Nigel and garlic is a natural antibiotic. Thank you very much. Um, Nigel uh, and Noah here to show you is here. So many good channels, so many good channels. Thank you, Alyssa, Trigga, Mama Goonie, all of you. Granny B is here. Granny B, I'm sorry I didn't call you out earlier. I was busy. I was busy. All right. Oh, you guys, I did not take my allergy medicine today. That's a good reason to plug my allergy medicine. So let's go get that allergy medicine so I can show you what I use. It, it's for some of you, you're like, it doesn't work. You're always blowing your nose. Well, I'm in Minnesota. It does work. It's really good stuff. Um, so I showed this last week, but I'll show you again. I refuse to take anything that is um, anything that's detrimental to my health. Uh, one of the reasons I do, don't do Sudafed or other uh, over-the-counter um, allergy meds is because I get audio hallucinations. That's a real thing audio hallucinations and it so like Benadryl and things like that do something with uh, my brain chemistry that make it so that it sounds like there's like big trains coming from behind me and I look I mean I literally hear this so I don't do that anymore um, I had my doctor my naturopath uh, prescribed something to me that had all of these same ingredients but I can afford this this is herbal immune balance sinus. And although I seem to be blowing my nose all the time, the one thing I'm not getting is, um, what I'm not getting is sinus infections because my I'm able to keep moving whatever is in there. So good to know, right? L little bit of TMI, but if you need a natural support for sinus, this is my product plug. I'm not trying to get endorsements. I'm, I'm endorsing them. I'm not trying to get anything from them. I believe in this product. Okay, simple. This is as simple as it is. If I had a knife, it'd be even simpler. How about preparedness, Karen? Okay, see that? It's prepared. I just have to find my onion. They um, were supposed to leave that end, uh, end on, just cut off the top and peel. Okay. What's going on? Boss Live, thumbs up the live, thank you. Oh, I made potato au gratin last night, supper. It was yummy, terrific. Salud, thank you, trigger tray, trigger try, trigger try. Okay, so here's what this recipe says. Cut it in half, leave this end on because you wanna be able to pull all of the, this out, okay? So you can watch this just from here because, ooh, got a little bit of tag on there. There it is, okay. Take your tags off. Okay, watch as I do magic. It's gone. Yes, watch as I do more magic. Oh, 
Okay. What I didn't prep before I did all that silliness is the garlic. Um, a tip for garlic, just so you know, your garlic should be um, tightly packed. So like before I peeled this, it looked like one bulb. If the bulb has started to separate and the skin is coming off, you guys, it's old. I mean, you can still use it. I wouldn't throw it out, but know that those cloves are probably dried out a little bit. So, and so we'll do four cloves of garlic. I have a lot of garbage here without a garbage bowl. If you don't have something to pound your garlic with, use a heavy bottom glass. This is a really easy way to get it peeled. Just smash it. Also, if you're going to chop it, half the chopping is done just by smashing it. And it comes out like that. It's that simple. Yeah, that's a little, garlic is a little sticky and sometimes that, those, that skin doesn't want to come off. There we go. And there we go, almost get that last skin off. So you guys, that's that's a simple, really easy way to peel your garlic. Just make sure you get all the skin off of it. There you go. So like I said, magic. So when I, it comes to seasoning, when it comes to seasoning, I will, um, I'll use cumin, a tiny bit of chili powder, and cumin, a tiny bit of chili powder, and uh, salt and pepper. That's it. Cumin, ch cumin, chili powder, salt and pepper. We want to cover this up. So it's going to take two quarts of water. Yay! One, two. That's it. So I'll let you look at that. It's going to be kind of dark because we don't have any light over here. But that's it, you guys. That's the prep right there. We're going to bring it to a boil. And then we are going to, once we bring it to a boil, we'll let it simmer until it's a creamy consistency. It's that easy. And then we that's when we season. Once it's gotten to a creamy consistency, that's when we season. Share out the live. Share out the live. Thumbs up if you haven't already. Save this water for later. And now I need to move some stuff out of the space so I can get working over here. Oh, man. So yes, rehearsal went late yesterday. We got done at like quarter to 10, which doesn't seem so late, but when you've been working on it, on it since, well, I was editing up until 5.30 and then, um, and then we had rehearsal, I had to get to rehearsal. Uh, we had rehearsals from six until 9.45 about, and then I came home and finished editing the video. I'm close. I'm close to having it up. I haven't missed. Yesterday was the first time where I had planned to post and I didn't. I couldn't. But it's like the time, same as when I was doing the dance concert and the dance concert was taking, sucking up all my energy. Woo! Almost. Um, that's exactly what's happening now because we're a week before we open. Right now. We will open a week from today. A week from today, and then, and then I'll have my life back. <laughs> oh, and sometimes I wonder why I do it. All right, Mama Goonie is still in the house. Alyssa, hello, Mama Goonie. Yes, restarting my PC. Okay, uh, Flower Glamorous is in the house. Hello, Flower Glamorous. Hello, good to see you. 
everybody in this chat knows Flower Glamorous. Um, sometimes she'll do question and answers like uh, Boss Life Online. And uh, I guess I maybe I shouldn't answer so honestly because both Boss Life and Flower Glamorous are like, Karen! We were supposed to be honest. Getting some coffee. You know what, Mama Goonie? Me too. I haven't had my coffee today either. And they saved just about a cup for me. The mighty microwave. Let's go ahead and put a lid on this, bring it up to a boil. First time I made these black beans, I didn't believe that it was going to be any good because I didn't soak them beforehand, nor had I, um, I didn't soak them, nor had I done the hour soak, but this is what the recipe called for. Now, I've added more ingredients than the original recipe I, I used, which was, I think it's called easy or lazy man's black beans. I've added more ingredients because I need more flavor. I add a little bit more heat. So, Kate, if pe peppers don't, if 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 uh, you don't want chili powder, just use cumin. Um, I'm probably going to add some red pepper flake because that's just an easy source of heat. You could also add cayenne or anything like that. So, um, we're getting ready to work on the black or the beet kvass. I have the second ferment of the beet kvass we did three weeks ago, and I'm going to strain that out. That's not going to take too much time. I need to take some allergy medicine. My allergy medicine, once again, I totally endorse this product. If you are not in favor of taking over-the-counter allergy meds or prescription, and it's, you know, it's just a mild allergy that's not going to send you into hives or whatever. I suggest you try something natural. One with um, wildcrafted butter bur bur extract works really well. So I'm drinking some sparkling water. And I take two of them. Can you take herbal um, herbal sinus on an empty stomach? It depends on who you are. My husband, when he takes this, he cannot take it on an empty stomach. I can take most anything on an empty stomach because uh, I know I'm going to put something in my gob eventually. All right, I'm gonna to continue to move some things around so we can get this done. So when I endorse a product, it's not for money because I'm not making any money on this channel um, at this point. It's still not for money though. I endorse something just like Blake Kirby, um, who has um, uh, Blake Kirby, <laughs> Daddy Kern's home, a homesteading story. Uh, that's a great channel. It's how I decided to start my own channel. Um, but he also endorses certain products, and it's not because um, he's getting paid to do it. He may get a little kickback. I don't get any kickback. I do it because I believe in it. I absolutely believe in this product. I absolutely believe in um, the pretzels I showed. Any of the gluten-free products I, sh I review, I'll tell you truthfully what I think of them and what, what to me means that it's good. Um, you can choose to buy them if you want, right? Okay. All righty, guys. I'm going to step off to the side for a minute while my allergy medicine kicks in. And oh, living in Minnesota. So it's raining right now. 
Okay, it's either raining and cloudy or it's cold and snowy. And every now and then, like yesterday, we get a beautiful day. Beautiful day. But right now, um, is it still raining? When I went out to get what I needed, it was still raining. So, you guys, ginger. This is not an organic ginger, so I will uh, spray it with apple cider vinegar and um, I will peel it to my, the best of my ability. This is a nice piece of ginger. Uh, sometimes you can, if you've bought, if you've um, purchased organic ginger, you will notice it is not this bulbous and this huge. Um, so I, I, it's a big piece of ginger. It's conventional. My beets are also conventional. So I won't, usually I'll save the beet grains and do something with them, but these are laden with pets, pesticides. The roots are not in, or the beets themselves are, have been under the ground, but they've been exposed to pesticides uh, because of the ground itself. So we're, we'll do our best with that. We're not gonna peel them, but we are gonna spray them with apple cider vinegar. They're really, really tiny compared to what I'm used to. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna use as many as we need. I bought nine. I also forgot to tell you that we're gonna add some carrots. Isn't it ironic that we're gonna add organic carrots to conventional beets? Okay, so I guess I bought, yeah, I bought nine, uh, nine beets. So let's get to straining first. Does she have a picture? I don't think so. We're gonna have to use this for today. Gosh, this is so pretty. Look at that. I almost feel guilty using it for beet kebabs. Who does not? Anyway. I'm gonna move you back over here so that you can watch the straining process. I also wanna see, show you um, what calm yeast looks like. Now, calm yeast is nothing to be afraid of. If you're on your fermenting journey, calm yeast is nothing to be afraid of. You wanna strain it out, you wanna scoop it out as much as you can, but you, calm yeast is a thin layer of yeast that forms on the top of some ferments, especially those that are um, have more sugars in them. Beets are notorious for lots of sugars. So oftentimes when I'll, I'll ferment my, when I do my uh, calm yeast, the, um, I'll notice that there's a thin layer at the top. Well, these um, beets were exposed these beets were exposed to the air when I made, after I made the first batch. So um, I'm gonna open this up and let you see. I've shown you what commies look like in the past. Um, it is nothing to be afraid of. So if you look here, I'm gonna take this out. If you look, you see a little bit of white floating around. That is calm yeast. And the worst it can do, the worst it can do is give your beets a different, or your beet kvass a different flavor. Um, this is not a bad case of beet, of, uh, of calm yeast. And I'm just going to scoop it out and throw it to the side. Sometimes, you guys, I've seen pictures of calm yeast that looks like um, see, look at this. Okay. I've seen pictures of calm yeast that, uh, looks like a really just super fuzzy. This is just, um, a little bit of yeast and com where, where calm yeast comes from is the air. It's just a, it's a household yeast that floats around that sometimes, um, gets into your ferments. Nothing to worry about. If it's blue, green, or black, throw it out. If in doubt, throw it out. That's my rule. If in doubt, throw it out. 
the last thing you want to do is try to preserve something because you put so much energy into it only to make yourself sick. Okay. So I have gloves on. We are going to pull that cabbage leaf out. I think I have a couple of them in there. And remember, this is the second ferment on these beets. So these beets have really given off all of their nutrients. My other rule of thumb is usually to never use a metal strainer, but in this household right now, we don't have anything but a metal strainer. So um, let's go ahead and strain this. So this beet kvass is gonna be more pink than red, although it's giving off a really good red flavor and it smells really, it smells delicious. This is the one I did with I, with pears and ginger, or apples and ginger. Okay. So since I have, um, since I've used this twice, I'm not going to do anything with it, but put it in the compost. Oftentimes you can go ahead and, um, oftentimes you can go ahead and put it in Hi. Oftentimes you can go ahead and put it in, uh, uh, you can roast it. You can, if it's the first ferment with the beets, you can cut it up in smaller pieces and you can put them in uh, salads. I don't ever do that. I usually compost it. If I had chickens, I would throw it to the chickens. If I had pigs, I'd put it in their slop. But I don't, you know what I have? I have a dog that barks at me. So, Oh, my baby fell asleep. Excellent. Link Sakers, now you can, oh, you can just have a nice day. Not that you couldn't before. Okay. So bottling this. What time do we have? Okay, we, we're good. We're really good. So we got that started. We're working on the beet kvass. I'm going to jar the beet kvass because we're running. Oh, I do have a couple. That's right. I forgot. I saved some kavita. Oh, my favorite kavita right now. The mojito, mojito lime coconut uh, mint. So it's a lime mint coconut. Put a lime in your coconut. You know what I'm saying. So we're going to bottle it in these. And then if we have to, we'll use the quart jar. But I, I, I'm not sure. You know what? I could always use the apple cider vinegar jar too. So let me rinse that out. Since this had apple cider vinegar in it, I'm just rinsing it. So if we need to, we can use this. I think. Let's try to use just this. That might be good. Do I have another? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Turn that way down because we're at a boil. All right. Yeah, we'll do it this way. This will be good. English teacher in France, I'm, I, I'm just, hello. First of all, if you guys don't have English teacher in France, she's just a beautiful young lady who is teaching English in France. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I really have enjoyed her channel. I just met her a couple days ago, and we've had a lot of fun. I've just had a lot of fun watching her channel. 
Um, if you would go ahead and make sure you connect with her, that would make me very happy. I'm sure she'd like that too. Hi, another healthy stuff. Yeah, beet kvass. I make it all the time on my channel. I have a video that shows you step by step. And right now what we're doing is we're straining one beet kvass into jars and then we're going to make another one. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and use the apple cider vinegar. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm gonna to have to taste this for you guys. So um, English teacher in France, beet kvass is a fermented beet juice where you take whole beets and cut them up and then you ferment them with a 2% salt brine, which is 19 grams of salt per quart. So we have one here and I think this will do. This is perfect. I'm glad I got that apple cider vinegar. There we go. That was absolutely perfect. Yes. And now what I'll have to do is make sure I taste for you guys. Oh, 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 oh. oh I love new beet kvasses. They make me so excited. I'm so excited. So, all right. Smells floral. It smells lighter than the other batch. Let's see how it tastes. Don't have a see-through glass. I'm gonna size this one. Mess this up. This I actually used as my fermentation weight in the beet kvass, so I feel pretty good about using this. All right, beet kvass is always better cold, but let's see how this one tastes. Like I said, floral and earthy. It had This one had apple and ginger powder, not fresh ginger. I'm gonna make this one with fresh ginger. That is, they all have their own flavors. Eve, gosh, 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 gosh. Hi, good to see you. We're, we're uh, tasting beet kvass. Thank you for coming in. Eve is new to me, which of course we know what that means, right? So Eve, Eve, I'm gonna check you out and read, go to your channel. Eve. Let me read your about. I don't know how to say your last name, dear. I'm sorry about that. Welcome to my channel. First of all, I'm Kenyon from Nairobi. Yay! I'm a person who loves anything related to beauty. I need, I need your channel. <laughs> beauty, that is makeup, skin care, hair, and fashion. I also, I'm also a makeup artist and a natural hair stylist. Ooh, girl. Natural hair, had it all my life. I will be doing makeup tutorials, natural hair tutorials, and any other thing related to fashion and beauty. Don't forget to subscribe and share. You have professional inquiries. You can connect with her on Facebook, Instagram, and Instagram. So let's look at what you got here, girl. I'm so glad you came over. Purple cut crease with glitter liner and oh my she knows how to do some makeup y'all and natural hair look at that her intro says it all girl i am so happy you came over she she has plenty of subscribers or at least they're not listed i know yes i will i'm gonna have should I video pr premiere my video? No, I can't do it tonight. I'm going to premiere my video uh, tomorrow night instead of tonight. It's my travel uh, vlog from here to part uh, to St. Paul and back with what Troy and I did. All right. I'm so glad to have found you. Thank. You. There you go, Eve. Eve, we are now connected. Were we connected before? Yes, now we are now connected. Beautiful hair and makeup. Wow. 
You have inspired me today because I am I'm a tired girl who didn't do either of those. Back to the back to the um beak of us. So floral, as usual. Um, this one is lighter, but it still has that rich flavor. I love it, Eve. You guys check Eve out. She's first of all, she's beautiful. Second of all, beautiful soul. Second of all, she has uh she's got a great channel. Mm. This is a winner. I definitely won with this one. And I let it sit for a week longer than I thought I would. And I think I I think I'm happy I did that. So let's put this in the fridge. It'll be better tomorrow. Okay, so um, I was, my plan was to be on an hour. I may need to be on a little bit longer. If you feel you can't stay while I, um, while I finish up the beak of us, that's, that's just fine. Um, the beans are boiling. I've got them to a simmer and I'm going to leave the lid with a little bit of crease. The artist devil, hello, how are you? Um, I am fine. I'm, I'm working on beet kvass right now. I just did some black beans. We strained some uh, beet kvass. I need to get that bagged up and in, into the uh, compost, but I'll just put it in a bag today. We'll put it in a bag today and then we will, I'll get it into the compost a little bit later. So. This is as easy as, this is another one of my dump and go recipes. Dump and go. Seriously? There we go. When you work with beets, this isn't so bad, but try to wear gloves. I have to wash the um, gallon jar so we can use it for the next batch because I'm not in my own home and I only have one gallon jar. Okay, put this in the, get this ready for the recycle bin. All right. Let's do this. Where's the jar? Where's the jar? There it is. Let that fill up and then we'll rinse it out. Um, with my ginger, I'm going to probably use that much. It's a huge piece of ginger. Look at that. Um, I'm going to spray it with apple cider vinegar and scrub it. I don't have a vegetable peeler here, so I won't be working with that. I need to check what allergens are in the air because, man, I'm suffering today. So I, when I'm doing ferments, I don't like to wash with um, soap and water because or soap may leave a residue, but I do like to spray it with uh, spray it down with apple cider vinegar, which has um, uh, good probiotics in it. It's got acetic acid, which kills bad bacteria while being able to maintain the good stuff. This jar had beet kvass in it, but it had a little bit of calm yeast, which is natural in the air. So that is why I... Um, it's another reason I 
wash it with uh, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar clears that out. Susie Bosch, just popping in to say hi. I'm working. I'll have to watch the replay. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. That means everything to me. Everything. So let's, um, a few more things in here that I need to get rid of. We're going to, I'll bring you over here to watch in just a second. So what is this beak of us? What is this? If you've been with my channel, you know that it is a fermented beet juice made from fresh beets. Uh, chunked, um, and you can flavor it any way you want to. I'm flavoring it with, I forgot to tell you, some carrots. So beets, whole oranges, ginger, and carrots. So it'll be a more of a beet, carrot, uh, carrot, beet, orange, ginger, beet kvass. That's a mouthful. The artist devil, oh, okay, hello, good to see you. Let's go watch me do this because this is the fun stuff. Okay, so I have my apple cider vinegar. I'll just rest it over here. I have this, which I obviously need to make room for you guys to see. Hmm, let's do this this way. Okay. Da, 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 da. Can you see me? Can you see? Ba -da 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 -da. So I will not be using the beet greens because these are con conventional beets. Normally I would do something fun with them, but conventional means nasty, but I can still use the root. One, two, three. I'll wash all, all of them. There we go. Okay. So first I'm going to rinse them off. I'm not going to use soap and water. Uh, or I'm using water. I'm not going to use soap because I don't want any kind of soap. I'm not just going to use water and really rinse them off. Go through each one until I don't feel any dirt on them. Got that one. You can feel, when you're washing vegetables, you can feel the, the grit. When you don't feel grit anymore, that's when uh, you've probably gotten all of the stuff off. Like I said, these are tiny, so I had to use a lot. Normally, the ones I get in the cities, oh my goodness, the ones I get in St. Paul, they're like this big half the time. There we go. We got all of those done. Now, now you guys, this is when I use my apple cider vinegar. I'm going to spray them down and let them sit for about five minutes. I spray each one individually. What this does is it starts, first of all, it inoculates them with a little bit of uh, with probiotics, but it also gets rid of a lot of the... Um, it kills a lot of the bad bacteria. If there is any bad bacteria on there, in five minutes, they will no longer exist. In my world, that's what I say. Okay. Ginger. I'm gonna use this much. I should rinse that too. <laughs> Lane Sakers, do you d dilute your ACV for spraying? No, I do not. I do not. I use full potency apple cider vinegar for spraying. I also um, said to use like two beets, but I think they must have been those big beets. You know what, Lane Sakers? Um, it depends on if they're talking about a quart or a gallon. I'm using a gallon, um, and I do this this way. 
I've been making this now for three years. And what I do is I try to fill it up to about here. Sometimes I'll go all the way up to here, but then I usually have spillage. But I fill it up to about here with whatever I'm doing. Then, of course, I put the cabbage leaf. Got to get the cabbage leaf out. I put the cabbage leaf on top and some sort of weight. I'll probably use this again. And um, then I let it, I let it ferment. Um, for three weeks, usually about three weeks, might be just two weeks this time, or I'll just bring it home. Where did I put my cabbage leaves? I think I put them in here. Yes. So when we made the purple cabbage, which is up there, I'll show that to you in a minute. I saved those outer leaves. And this is what I used to push down the, um, this is what I use to push down the, the vegetables, whatever I'm using, vegetables or fruit in any of my ferments. So let's wash this as well. And I will spray this down. Hey, you guys, anything that I say on this channel, it's what I believe. It's not necessarily, um, there may not be literature to support it. Actually, everything I, I see and say, everything I do and say, I found in some form of research. Sometimes that is, um, sometimes that is scholarly articles. Sometimes it's anecdotal through blogs. But you have to be careful with that because people make claims about stuff that are not supported in research. I make claims about stuff and tell you, you know, I this is what I believe from my own experience. I hate to throw those away, but they're conventional and too many pesticides on them. But it's uh, what I believe, okay? This is what I believe. So um, when I'm spraying vegetables down, and things down with apple cider vinegar. I do know that apple cider vinegar kills germs. I absolutely know, know that. I also say that apple cider vinegar kills bad bacteria. Well, a germ is a bad bacteria. In the same instance, the acidic... Hi, Lisa! Yes, we're still here. I was gonna, um, I was gonna get off at 11.30, but I started at 10.30 for a reason. I was super tired. And I had two things to do. I had to get the black beans done because I'm going to eat those for dinner along with some other um, taco stuff. And then I'm getting some more beet kvass done because we need it. In the, everybody in this house now drinks beet kvass. Everybody does. In my home, we have two people drinking beet kvass. So just like I have to continue getting the kefir ready over and over, except for today, I don't have to do that. Um, I have to continually make beet kvass. It's so good for your gut. Um, I will show you how I chunk my beets. Has it been five minutes? No. I really do need to let those sit for five minutes, but I can get everything else ready. Um, the oranges, we are going to cut into quarters. My, I do beat kvass about this big. I do want them in bigger chunks uh, because I don't want them to ferment too fast and not get all the nutrients out of them. So, fly. Ah, uh, the cutting board. Let me clean this off. There we go. Okay, so with my oranges, these are pretty big oranges. I'll probably, I just might use one. I think that'll be enough and then I can eat this one because I'm smelling it and it's like, You know what I'm saying? So I'm probably gonna cut one up for myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll replace that. Let me just, so there's that. And then this will be for me. I'll eat that later. And then carrots. I only need to rinse the carrots because um, they're organic. So I'm gonna use, I have a lot of beets. Why do they make these things so hard to get into? I'm gonna go rinse these off. If you can, share out the live. These are organic, so I'm not really worried about them. I'm just gonna rinse off whatever dirt is present. If there is any dirt present, I'm not gonna spray them. So with the carrots, who's in the chat? Who's in the chat? Devil's artist. I'm just listening. That's fine. Um, so links, here's what I do. My, my beets are going to be about that big. Okay. So that's how big I'm going to do my carrots. That's how big I'm going to do my beets, I mean. I said carrots, right? Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! Mama Goody, me! I'm just listening. Me listening. Artist Devil, great. Oh, good, we're still here. Here you go. He here you go. Well, here, here you go. Here you go. That's from uh, Saturday Night Live something. Had to be Eddie Murphy. Well, here, here you go. He was doing some poet thing. Get rid of that too. So, Lynx Acres, what you, I think what Cultures for Health says is that you don't want them to be too big. That's all. You don't want them too big or too small. And I think this is what they call for, if that helps you out at all. Okay, I'm done. I'm sitting there looking at myself. I'm going to load these carrots in. And we're going to start working on the, um, start working on the, uh, beats. I need, who's in the chat, mama? Nope, in living color. Want to hear? Here you go. In living color. So who was it? It wasn't Eddie Murphy. Who was it? It was, um, forgot. Oh, I forgot. Hold on. That was one of the brothers. One of the Keenan, it was Keenan Ivory. I don't know what his name. One of the Wayans brothers, right? What he hiccups. What he hiccups. I remember that. All right. Let's get the ginger because that's easy. Then I'll put on the gloves. This is not an exact science. No, you do not have to cut the skin off, especially if you have organic. If you have soaked them in something, you'll be okay. Okay. So today so far we have um, made the black beans. There is a piece I do not want right there. We're going to put that in the garbage bowl. We have made the black beans. We are in the business right now of fermenting some beets, making beet kvass, which is going to be an orange or a red ginger orange carrot beet kvass. <laughs> when you make beet kvass, you can flavor it any way you want to. You certainly don't have to um, just have beets, and you can throw... Um, you can throw ginger in there because it's really healthy for you. 
ginger and and orange citrus for, uh, vitamin C with the orange all the probiotics and all of the goodness that comes with ginger which is a ginger is both an antiviral and an antibacterial natural natural naturally New Orleans okay so there we got there's that okay now we'll cut up the beets and we'll layer the oranges in there. Who, Mama Goonie Natural New Orleans, you are awesome. Sharing on my community page. Thank you, Natural in New Orleans. Okay. So we have all of these. I'll put this over here because I can see that you guys, you can see that. You can see this. I'll move you back a little bit so you can see even more. You got that. I'll get this out of the way. There you go. Now you can see what you need to see. I need my gloves. Because beet stain. Hello? Hello. Just home for lunch? Yeah. Hey. My host is home, so that's Brian Brian. So I got quiet suddenly. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So pretty big chunks. Ah. So one, two. I just got quiet. Okay, you guys. Ooh. Good morning. You guys, I just got quiet because my host got home and I'm kind of embarrassed that I'm live streaming in front of him. <laughs> ah, that's going all over the place. So these are small beets, so I'm cutting them in pretty, it looks like large chunks, but they're about a half inch to an inch. I probably use all of them. Thank you, naturally, New Orleans. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Oh. So we'll just get all these all cut up and we'll be done. Hold on. Try to get them as uniform as possible. But it's this simple. It really is. Oh, this is a tiny one. So pretty. These beets are just gorgeous on the inside. Just gorgeous. For conventional beets, I'm kind of impressed. Alicia, hi, my host is home, so I'm whispering because I'm embarrassed to be live streaming in front of him. So I guess I'm doing ASMR now. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna layer in these oranges so that the beets are on top of them. Let's mix those in a little bit. Then I'll put the rest of the beets on top.
And the last two beats are going in. That simple, you guys. It's that simple. This is the last one. So pretty. And then we have to make a 2% brine, which is 19 grams of salt per quart of water. Seven watching Mama Goonie, one piece of my... So, Alicia is... Yes, Alicia is here. That looks delicious, Karen. What are you making? I am making beet kvass with orange. So it's a fermented beet juice with orange and ginger and carrot. So I layered that in there. And I have to make a 2% salt brine. So I'm gonna use 19 grams per quart. I can, take, I can take these off now. So I'm gonna use 19 grams per quart. So I'm gonna find another quart jar and see if we can do it both at the same time. Okay. We are lacking in the court jaws, so I'll go into my room and see what I can buy. ASMR. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> One peaceful mind, Alicia. Hello, everybody. Okay, I know I have a court jar in here. It doesn't matter if it's brown, because all we're doing is a 2% salt brine. Yep. Got a brown one, doesn't matter. 19 grams of salt. Uh, yes, they have a weight. We have a weight. So we can do this. We can do this. Let's look at the beans. It's coming along just fine. Looks good. So here's this. Here's this. We need a weight, a scale. So we'll put um, what I do. Okay, turn that off. Now we'll do it. Okay, so this is already on grams and it's calibrated. So 19 grams of salt per quart. Why am I doing it this way? This would be easier. Uh, okay, this makes more sense, okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. There's the first one. And here's the second one. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Perfect. So nineteen grams of salt each. We can see that. Now it says 18. Nope, there's 19. So 19 grams of salt. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna add some water to this and swirl it until it's ready so that we have two quarts of water for all of that. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, we'll add another quart.
Okay, it's imperative that you use an, a 2% salt brine at the least because it kills the bad bacteria. And that's what we want. We want the bad bacteria gone. And allow that'll allow the good bacteria to thrive. So freaked out. Okay. So stir. See, it's cloudy now, but it won't be cloudy in a little bit. So, absolutely love everything with oranges. I know I was going to put two oranges in there, but I decided to save to put just one in. It'll give it a nice uh, citrusy flavor. It'll add to that floral flavor, and it will be absolutely delicious. That's all there is to it. And the cool thing is I have a starter. That's right. That newest batch of beet kebabs can act as a starter for, oh, except for this one. Have, I don't want to do that. So the reason I'm not using the um, newer batch of uh, beet kvass as a starter is because it did have a touch of calm yeast, and I don't want to introduce that to this. Though calm yeast does come from the environment, this one didn't have calm yeast. So. And as you can see, it has become a little more clear. The salt is all off the bottom, so we're going to go ahead and pour this in here. We'll be just fine. So here we go. We're gonna pour in the first quart. We're gonna pour in some of my previous batch. Now, as a starter, you could also use sauerkraut juice or any other kind of fermented vegetable juice. So, that's good, eh, a little bit more. There we go. I'm probably going to have to do more of this, so put, we'll pour this up to the top of the leaves, and then I'll probably make more. Um, there we go. Yep. I'll probably have to make more uh, brine leaves. Once again, when you see the pottery stuff on the outside of a cabbage leaf, that is not pesticide or anything like that. That is actually the natural yeast that land on the cabbage. Um, that's why cabbage is so easy to ferment with. And it's also it, very helpful as a starter because it brings its own, its own uh, good bacteria and yeast to the party. I'm gonna put another one in there. There you go. Good. What we want is everything under the brine. So let's see how much, if we need any more. We will not need any more, but we do need a weight. I'm wondering if. This would probably be the better way to do it. Yep. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. Life with uh, a table full. Hello. Something has popped and my allergies are going crazy today. So I got a little bit quiet because my host is home. I don't, and I'm kind of embarrassed. 
So anyway, let's, uh, I know we have a fermentation lot. So this is the fermentation lot from the previous batch of beet kvass and it's stuck. Here we go. Okay. So I'm gonna sanitize this even though it's probably safe with apple cider vinegar in and out. Let that sit for a minute, but in the meantime, we will cover this with, um, <laughs> we'll cover this with uh, plastic wrap, the way we normally do. And that's also to help prevent the bad bacteria from getting in, or air from getting in. Since these uh, fermentation locks do not have rings, rubber rings, um, I like to put plastic on there so that we can um, so we can make sure that that we're sealed and airtight. So we'll start with that in just a minute. Let's get those rinsed off. And we're gonna go with the plastic wrap over the top, as you can see, just like that. Get it tight. And I'm gonna screw this on here. So that's gonna act like a rubber seal. And then I put my airlock on. So this is the same airlock that you would use for um, for beer or wine. There you go. We're good to go. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna end this stream. I so appreciate you coming through. I'm a little bit shy right now. Um, I really do appreciate you coming through. I've had a great time. Um, thank you, Carter Zeeds, for saying amazing. This is going to sit for two to three weeks. If it doesn't get done fermenting here in Park Rapids, I will be bringing it home and finishing it on my counter, and you'll see that. If I happen to finish it here, you'll see me do the unveiling and tasting. So I, love, um, I loved having every single one of you. It is 12 o'clock. I want to make sure I get that video uploaded um, that I worked on for six days, uh, trying to figure out how to make things look exciting when it's actually just a drive from here to there and back, as well as the short two days of fun Troy and I had on my birthday. So thank you so much. I will see you later. Thank you. I really appreciated your time. I enjoyed you being here. Live, love, learn. And I, my video premiere will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. I will not be live tomorrow, but I will be live Sunday from 11 to 1. All right. See you later. Bye.